Welcome back to the mid-August edition, turf edition. Plenty to talk about with grade one races on the side, as well as some turf issues in Saratoga in general. But before we get to that, David, Paddock Prince, we have to give props to your Del Mar sheet last Saturday. Absolutely crushed it. Yeah, there was a 30 to 1 winner um, for with Edmund Maldonado that was like 12 to 1 on the line and just had a got on the lead and kept going. There's been some big price winners on the sheet to start the meet. Still looking to try to hit a big pick five, but Del Mar's <laughs> definitely been the track to play this summer if you want some prices in full field. Saratoga's had just such awful luck with weather, trees hitting the power lines. <laughs> I mean, it's just been all over the place. Del Mar has been definitely the place to play, especially. I haven't had any good pick fives yet, but in multi-race bets, it's been really hard to play Saratoga. And at least at Del Mar, they've had full fields, big prices all meet. And I'm guessing it'll stay the same with the steam they've had so far. I know they're going into week three, so we'll see how it keeps going. But um, yeah, I would definitely say Del Mar's had more prices and more exciting races up to this point. And uh, speaking of pick fives, uh, we are going to have the late pick five at Colonial, which includes those graded stakes, Million, Beverly D, Secretariat. Uh, you're going to put them in both sheets this weekend. Yeah, I'm just going to do a pick just the um, five races in Colonial on the late pick five, throw them at the end of the Saratoga sheet and the Del Mar sheet. So if you do Saratoga, you get Colonial, obviously. And if you get Del Mar, you get um, Colonial as well. So I'll just be doing the late pick five. They're very competitive races. Um, the turf division for the older males is obviously not the best, but there's, you know, 10, 11 horses. I don't remember the exact number, but it's a full field and it's a good betting race. So it looks like a fun, um, I think there's one dirt race in the sequence and then four turf races. So it should be a fun pick five. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the million got 11. I uh, definitely think it's a competitive group. Uh, Beverly D with, uh, they have seven and eight in the secretariat. So uh, should be a, a good pick five there. The yeah. other grade one turf race this weekend, the four star Dave, that's at a mile at Saratoga. Casa Creed versus Annapolis part two at Saratoga this meet one of them or someone else. I think it's one of them mainly, but I wouldn't be shocked if Emmanuel won the race because he ran very, very well in the poker. And I think they're taking the rails down at Saratoga on the inner turf. And every time they do that, it becomes very inside favoring. Mm -hmm. So Emmanuel drew the rail Annapolis last time out, he was so he ran at Churchill in May off a layoff from the Breeders' Cup, and then he had another little setback to July when he ran in the um, Kelso when he lost to Casa Creed. So I think you're going to see a more forward placed and sharper Annapolis, and he's going to have a tactical advantage on Casa Creed. I don't know how many turf races they're going to run on the inner track before the four star Dave, obviously, with the rain coming again the day, and they're obviously might be none. yeah, so there might not be none. So I don't know, I don't want to proclaim a proclaim a bias on the inner turf but in the past that's what happened i think annapolis will be forward more forwardly placed and more fit second off the bench casa creed he's a really good horse but with his style and his jockey i think he's probably going to be three or four wide regardless so i would probably play annapolis if casa creed's a favorite but it would not shock me if emmanuel runs well because he ran very well in the poker last time out closing into a slow pace yeah, and I actually am curious about the dynamics here because Casa Creed was uh, closer last time. I think there's a turns. rabbit in the race. Oh, that's right, and and it was two turns versus the previous were turf sprint, so it sort sort of makes sense he'd be further back, including the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. But as you said, I, I think second off the bench with Annapolis, if he all of a sudden is closer, could maybe help set things up for uh, the uncoupled stable mate because there are two horses who like the lead here who don't have much of a chance in my sea cottage and so high. So that's what are, I was saying. These are going to be motoring. I think the three's a rabbit, isn't he? She, he's got to be a rabbit. for oh, the you're, seven. you're saying the rabbit in this race, right? Yeah. The three's got to be my sea cottage has to be a rabbit for the seven horse. The other Gary Barber, Mark Cassie horse. I don't know why that me and my sea cottage would think he would have any chance in this kind of race. He's speed. He's probably just going to send and try to set it up because Mark Cassie does have three horses in this race. I mean, I would say I, 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 if you're them and you see the entries, you're probably glad because so high, I would have been a little interested in getting eight pounds, eight to nine pounds as lone speed. But now there's no chance he's that. So, I mean, I'm sure they're happy they put the rabbit in. It, it's an interesting use of a rabbit with who's going to be the fourth choice or fifth choice. I, I mean, nice chocolate still has to contend with three much better horses. 100%. But, you know, I, you know, I think 
I don't want to get down this rabbit hole of no pun intended of talking about a <laughs> rabbit in races, but I think um, there should be more rabbits done in U.S. Oh, racing. Absolutely, because it makes races, especially in New York, it seems like where they're so slow paced. At least you know you're going to get a pace if there's a rabbit in there and make the dynamics a little more fair to the closers. But like you said, I don't see any of the Mark Cassie horses winning. I just thought it was interesting that if the three horse runs, he does look like indeed a rabbit, in my opinion, for the seven horses uncoupled stable. I mean, yes, it's uncoupled stable mate. Well, don't want to give too much away, but it is a, a million dollar race. Uh, very prestigious at, one at that in the Arlington million. And uh, I thought they did a great job getting a competitive group uh, together led by uh, maybe a tone based on what he's done. Uh, masterpiece no way. now with, well, <laughs> no way. You think he's going to be the favorite? I abs Oh, I absolutely think he'll be the favorite. You think a tone's going to be the favorite in here? Yes. See, when I looked at the race, I don't know what it is with people in set piece, but man, they really gravitate to him. But you know, maybe they, they do it. And I actually like when I HRN did the line. So you know, when I looked at it, it had it had set piece even higher than this. And I actually was like, they bet this horse every time, and his sheets numbers match up too. So it's not like they bet him with. I mean, I get it. So I, I moved him down a little bit. Um, and I'm not saying he should be the favorite. Was. I just feel like set piece has this like weird following of people thinking he's no, like, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, and the other one I struggled with that I actually lowered a touch just because the numbers are so powerful. I mean, maybe, maybe it should be six instead of five on Rock Emperor. I mean, he's he's got he's never been competitive the last four, but the the numbers, he's the he's the fast fastest or co-fastest in the race depending on what you look at it was just hard to make them too high because people, I just feel like they're going to view this as maybe an easier spot and figured he might bet them, but maybe I messed up with five there. Catnip probably should be a little lower. I don't know. I don't know. Rock Emperor, like if you look at his form, he runs these crazy good races every once in a while, like right. hundred plus, like every once in a while though. So he's really hard to predict. So like if I was betting him to win, I would never take below five to one in this kind of race because you just don't know what he's going to do. He hasn't, he won the Bowling Green last year with a 102 and then he won the um, turf classic a couple years back at Belmont, but he's just in and out. And that's why I don't think a tone is, I can't trust that horse. His last two races have been terrible. He mm. won in the Pegasus, but he also got an unbelievable ride in that race. And I just don't trust the tone at seven and two. I think if I was doing a fair value on him, I would take no lower than five or six to one at this point, based on his last two races. All right. Well, uh, I definitely think it all adds up to a, a good race, Good, it's part of the pick five and, uh, Arlington Millions at Colonial now, so we'll Colonial. see how that works. Was it Churchill last year? Right? right. Yeah, this is actually the fourth track that's had the Arlington Million. What was the What was the other one? Is it Woodbine when Arlington was closed? I did not know that. Yeah. So, a little trivia. I have it's nice that it's a Colonial this year. I mean, they have a good turf course. I mean, obviously, we'd rather have it at Arlington because the Arlington <laughs> Million was one of the best racing days to go to. I went twice. It was one of the most fun oh, days phenomenal. to go to. Yeah, so obviously, we all wish it was there. But if obviously, that's not an option anymore. So at least Colonial has a nice turf course. And Yep. Well, that pick five will be part of your sheet. Saratoga, Saturday. Del Mar, Saturday. Colonial pick five in either of those. Colonial pick and, five. And uh, any, anything else? No, I don't really have much to add. I, we didn't talk about Cody's wish last weekend. He couldn't uh, get the nine. Yeah. He couldn't I, get the nine. I mean, for it's kind of hard to say it was the distance, right? I mean, he ne just never looked. He never looked like he was going to even be competitive in that race. And honestly, if he was competitive, I don't know if he was beating White Barrio because no, White Barrio. It's a pretty I mean, stout he, performance. Uh, yeah, he. I mean, he looked like his feet were in legs were in fast forward the way he was running in the lane. So I don't. I mean, even if he would have ran a huge race with the dynamics of the race, I don't even know if he could have won the race if he showed up with his best effort. But you know, at least they tried, and now they can cut him back. I'm guessing. Yeah, I, don't know I like the gonna... try. I mean, if if I were Woodbine, I'd be saying, "Hey, we have a Grade One." mile race on turf i mean at this point they have nothing to lose and the the dirt mile to me is such a consolation oh i know and he already won and he's already won it and it's two turns again like to me i'd roll the dice on something like the turf or you know, i mean i don't know this is just talking one more I, I guess he has um elite power in the sprint i was gonna say you could cut him back in the sprint but yeah he, i don't I, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. It's just, it's an interesting. No, I mean, you can still cash some checks and tell the story, but 
I think I think Woodbine matches up. It's a prestigious race. It's a grade one. Bill Mott is very known for doing random things with his horses on surfaces too. He'll just throw a horse on the <laughs> turf randomly or throw a horse on the dirt randomly. So I'm not I mean, I wouldn't put it past him at this point because there's no really I mean what I don't know what he's gonna run in before the Breeders Cup. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean he didn't run, he didn't empty the tank in the Whitney, that's for sure. Uh and charge it's another one who just completely didn't show up. And that that actually makes me more inclined to give a mulligan because it's not like he was the only horse who wasn't competitive. Charge it. Charge it didn't even make the front half of the field at any point. And he just talked to him being lone speed. I, and he wasn't, and he wouldn't, I don't know if it was Johnny V or the horse not wanting to be there, but he just, he has to be in the front or loping on the front to win. It's pretty obvious at this point. He's not going to overcome any adversity. This is not what he does. Right now, before we get off this dish, would you rather have, would you take right now, would you take a three-year-old or a four-year-old in the classic? Three or four? Or three I would or take older. the three-year-olds. I mean, it, if White of Barrio runs back to that race, he's, three months. Pretty, he's uh, training up to the race. It's in like three months. Yeah, that's what a game. Uh, yeah, I'd probably lean three-year-old. I mean, you get Mage, Forte, Archangelo. Some Bob we haven't heard of yet. <laughs> yeah. He's about a break is made in sometime this weekend. <laughs> so, so, yeah, like, no, I mean, the, the Travers will tell us a lot in that regard. So, two weeks away from Saturday. So, is Alabama next weekend then? Yep. And then we got Travers and Hopeful, and um, they're done. Probably be off the turf till Travers Day, but unless it's a states race. Wow. I'm joking. So, four, four Saturdays left. Yeah, it's halfway through. I think yesterday was the halfway point. Mm. All right. Well, halfway home at Saratoga. My kids went back to school yesterday, so school's over. I mean, Good thing they're not in Jefferson me. County. No, they'd be back yesterday and out today. Yeah. Boondoggle. All right. Well, that's our dish on all things turf this weekend. Again, Colonial Pick 5 is going to be in either sheet, so uh, if you're a subscriber, you'll see it in both, but uh, definitely another reason to, to pick up Saratoga or Del Mar on Saturday, and we'll dish next week on the Alabama. Payne will be the favorite, everybody, if you didn't know that. Yeah. All right. That's next week. Good luck this week.